Hi there, in this episode, Nobel Prize and Mechanics. What is mechanics and when did it start? What about the black civilization and did it really matter? Is all what we know about history true? And many exciting other subjects on this episode on Mechabyte. In the beginning was mechanics. So profound and so true. This quote from the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1914, Max von Laue, expresses how old is mechanical engineering. It is the first applied science ever practiced by humans. They first invented the wheel and the screws and used the inclined plane and pulleys. But what is mechanics exactly? Dirty hands are the stereotypic image of mechanics. However, the science is much bigger than that. In Encyclopedia Britannica, it is defined as the science concerned with the motion of bodies. So it deals with the transportation means on land, air, and space, lifting devices, robotics, and fluid mechanics, gaseous, liquid, or mixed, which means any moving matter. Wow. In addition to moving bodies, mechanics also deals with moving energy, which makes thermodynamics, thermal pumps, engines, also subjects of mechanics. It also includes metallurgy and renewable energy. I hope this definition changed the image of the mechanics. To include, in addition to that, that also. Not real, but a mechanic. And you're... The mechanic. Tony. Uh, hold on a sec. Why the fantasy when there is more awesome in reality? Behold. The first Iron Man, Richard Browning, the founder and CEO of Gravity. Richard is the inventor of the 1000 horsepower suit, which is much more powerful than many supercars. With these suits, you can fly in the Iron Man way. The second real example is much more spectacular and impossible to get covered in one video. He is so awesome that the creators of the character Tony Stark was inspired by him. Elon Musk is the co-founder, CEO and motivator of the most revolutionary companies in the world, Tesla, SpaceX and SolarCity, and other not less spectacular companies like Boring Company, OpenAI, Neuralink and other projects of an unmatched dinner level. Hyperloop and his plan to colonize the planet Mars. The history of mechanics, like any branch of history, is not immune from error, controversy, and sometimes lie. It's said that Galileo dropped two steel balls of different masses but the same material from the Leaning Tower of Pisa, and they landed at the same time. C'est un grand pipo historique. The story that Newton was inspired by an apple hitting his head is almost certainly apocryphal. From the book, A Brief History of Time, by me, Stephen Hawking. The beginning of this civilization is marked by the settlement of a human in cities when he gave up the hunting lifestyle and started to evolve in groups. So he begins to cultivate the land and raise animals instead of hunting them. The first civilizational revolution took place between Iraq and Syria, or what is called Mesopotamia. The civilization marked the history by three major intellectual revolutions. The invention of agriculture, the legislation, and literacy. Technologically, we owe them the invention of the wheel, the first use of the inclined plane, 
and also a lot of agricultural tools that look primitive today but at that time were revolutionary. The asserted image of black Africans is generally poverty, ignorance, and the predisposition to slavery. However, a very controversial study was published and presented in a documentary entitled The Great Pyramid K-2019. This study presents a new theory about the way in which the Great Pyramids were built. It presents also a new vision about the origins of the ancient Egyptians and connect them to the Latin civilization. The documentary can be summarized as follows. First, it disproves the myths behind the building of the Great Pyramids. They were not made by aliens and the huge building rocky blocks were not brought from far. The study supposes that those big blocks were cast and molded in the same place like modern concrete. As for the treatment of the very hard rocks like granite that were used to make spectacularly smooth artwork, instead of being synthesized in place like limestone, all hard materials were melted using big lenses. The oddness of such a theory can disappear by watching these amateur YouTubers using lenses to melt even metals. The next point in the documentary treats the origins of the ancient Egyptians based on a linguistic analysis, historical testimonies and physical and ethnic comparisons. The study concludes that the ancient Egyptians are from black origins, or Negro as stated by the director of the documentary Krasniki, who adds at the end of the documentary after a series of comparisons between the Egyptian pyramids and those in the Latin America that they are from the same origins. And this makes the Egyptians the first conquerors of the New World before Columbus or even the Vikings. Away from any controversial theory, it's undeniable that the Egyptians, whatever their origins, have built one of the greatest civilizations ever and proven a technological superiority that defies space and time. Far toward the east, the Indian and the Chinese civilizations made the mathematics and the applied mechanics revolutions. The Chinese invented the gears, the paper, the compass, seismic detectors, technologically smart weapons, and very ingenious navigation systems. The Chinese have a phenomenal will and a very fine artistic taste. And they left a great legacy which testifies to them those two qualities. Who can escape from admiring their great wall and their fine and ingenious umbrellas? The next civilization is the Greeks. This huge civilization was very generous with science, both theoretically and practically. Among the most famous names of the time we find Pythagoras, Plato and Aristotle, who had different visions about the relationship between mathematics and the physical reality. We can't speak about Greek science without mentioning the great Archimedes, to whom we owe a lot of ingenious inventions and who is considered as the founder of the static mechanics. Now that we arrived at the Islamic civilization, we find that the historians are split into three categories. Those who don't make any mention of it, and others that consider the Muslims as simple curators of the Greek knowledge. By consequence, we find in the well-spread version of the science history a 1000 years gap called by Dr. Al-Hassani the 1000 years amnesia. You see what I see? <laughs> and this 1000 years amnesia, which, which troubles me, and you find this in maths, in, in, in school books, historians of the third category. The Islamic Golden Age, massive strides were made in mathematics. Are either few or doubtful. The stars that have names, two-thirds of them have Arabic names. And around that period, that 300-year period, the intellectual center of the world was Baghdad. And it was that period we had the advances in, like, engineering and, and biology and medicine and, and, and mathematics. 
all this is going on and it's all traceable, not to some long thousand year tradition in, the, in Islam, it's traceable to this 300 year period. And almost inexistent in the mass media. People like Jajari, like Abdul Latif al Baghdadi, like Ibn al Baytar, like Urdi, Tusi, Ibn al Nafishi, Khafri, and so on. This is only to list a few. All of them lived and worked and died after Ghazali. Baghdad was destroyed, destroyed 1258. The Maragha Observatory was set up between 1259 and 1260. As an example of the first orientation, we can quote the physics star Stephen Hawking from his famous book, A Brief History of Time. Our present ideas about the motion of bodies date back to Galileo and Newton. Before then, people believed Aristotle, who said that the natural state of a body was to be at rest and that it moved only if driven by force. It followed that a heavy body should fall faster than a light one because it would have a greater pull toward the earth. Then he adds, I mean Stephen Hawking, no one until Galileo bothered to see whether bodies of different weights did in fact fall at different speeds, which is far from truth. Let's examine this quote from Avicenna or Ibn Sina. Yes, Avicenna, the doctor, from his book al isharat wa Tembiha. You know that if a body is isolated from any external influence, he can only preserve his state and his bodily configuration. It is worth noticing that he didn't say rest, as stated by Aristotle. Then he adds, It is an intrinsic property of the body that pushes it to resist any change and to want to keep its current state, which is exactly the Newtonian definition of inertia. Other quote from Ibn Malik al-Baghdadi is even more astonishing than that. Not so long after Vicenna, he lived between 1087 and 1164. And the three following quotes are all from his book Al-Mu'tabar fi al-Hikmah. First quote. The more the applied force, the higher the speed, and the time shortens. This can be translated in modern words as the speed is directly proportional to the applied force, which is known as Newton's second law or the dynamics second principle. Second quote. If a ring is pulled by two fighters or wrestlers, each wrestler will exert the same force as his opponent. By introducing this concept or image while speaking about mechanics, it is clear that he means Newton's first law. The third quote is clearer and more spectacular. If a group of bodies are in free fall in the void, their speeds will be the same, the biggest like the smallest and the lightest like the heaviest. Even a cone pointing forward will have the same speed as one on his large base. Those characteristics will have influence only if the movement takes place in a resistant medium like air, water or others. Which is opposite to Aristotle's theory and identical to Galileo's. It is impossible to list all the Muslims' contributions to theoretical mechanics in one video. As for the applied mechanics, I let you contemplate these designs of dozens of centuries. We finish this historic tour by the modern era, marked mainly by the works of Galileo and Newton. It is widely accepted that Galileo is the first to translate the physical phenomena into a humanly comprehensible mathematical language that has the numbers and the primitive geometries as its characters. He had also a vision about the universe different from Aristotle's. For more information on the Galilean revolution, you will find a link in the description to a French conference given by Etienne Klein. It is worth noticing that Etienne Klein had the same opinion 
about how everybody before Galileo believed Aristotle and his theory about the free fall. D'ailleurs, entre Aristote et Galilée, elle n'a pas cessé d'être enseignée, sans que quiconque trouve à y redire, puisqu'elle était conforme à l'observation. It is also widely accepted that Isaac Newton is the founder of modern mechanics. His theory about inertia, entirely published in his monumental book Principia, was universally accepted and almost considered sacred. Even after it was proven wrong by the theory of relativity in the beginning of the 20th century, then by the quantum mechanics principles, it is still applicable in what is called classical mechanics. In the next episode, we will discuss the relationship between mechanics and mathematics with an exciting example in Megabyte.